The Bloodline opened up the show. Roman Reigns came out at the time, 1279 days, now at 1280. He got in the ring. He was disappointed with the fans. He said he was going to leave because they weren't acknowledging him. But then Heyman said, no, no, you can't leave because The Rock is coming out. So The Rock came out, did his thing, made fun of Arizona, said it was the number one city for meth and cocaine use. Well, no wonder The Rocky got so many chants. Get it? The Rock, cocaine, crack, right? Oh, they love The Rock. Literally. That was me trying to be funny. So The Rock answered Cody's challenge with a no, 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 no. You can't go one-on-one -on -one with the great one. All the ladies want to go one-on-one -on -one with the great one. That got a lot of cheers. So he proposed something which I thought was actually really interesting. On night one of WrestleMania... Assuming Cody Rhodes and Seth accept, right? They're going to do that in Dallas, Texas next week on SmackDown. The Rock said, and I quote, Me and Roman versus you and that walking emoji clown Seth Rollins. And if Cody and Seth beat them, there will be no bloodline, no Paul Heyman, nothing, no distractions on night two. So they say and they're going to have their lawyer sign it, the whole thing. However, if Cody Rhodes and Seth lose the two on two on night one at Mania, night two will be bloodline rules, which is essentially anything goes. It's going to be freaking wild. I can't wait to freaking see it. Cody never came out. I was kind of hoping he would, but he didn't. And it was interesting when the. When The Rock, yeah, when The Rock said, good thing I have my notes. When The Rock said, if you smell, and he goes to lift the mic, Roman stopped him and actually said, I need you to do something for me. Acknowledge me. And The Rock said, I acknowledge you, my tribal chief. Actually did it and gave him a hug. It's like, wow. The whole thing has to be a work within a work. Right? Obviously, it's scripted, I'm just saying, but that has to be it. Because again, when The Rock lifted up his hand like this, he made a point to... Like, like at first, he kind of lifted... Because a lot of people... Let me make sure my camera's on straight on my finger, otherwise I end up looking like a jackass. Yeah, so he puts his hand up, not to put too much into it. Now, most people go like this for the Roman reign for throwing up the ones, right? And then if your hand's like a bit open, you're just looking too much into it. But when you're putting it up like that... And then all of a sudden, your thumb literally goes out of your way, out of its way, whatever, to, to do that. I don't know, man. I'm just saying this whole thing could be a ruse just to get you going. Okay, let's take that off. To th have you think that he's with Roman. He acknowledged him. He's making fun of people all over the U.S. for the you know probably almost a month. Just to have the bloodline think he's there. And just because they wrestle and they beat the shit out of each other, and it's true, and they really do end up fighting, at the end of it all, if it means that Cody gets to finish his story, right? I'm really hoping that's what it is. Because The Rock is at the end of his career, no offense. I, I don't want him to go off on a heel note. I don't. I, I really don't. No. All right. Grayson, Waller, and Austin. Well, we'll get to... Okay. We'll get to that in a moment. Yeah, I guess we'll leave it there. Grayson and Austin chat backstage. LA Knight comes in asking them if you've seen AJ Styles, which are like, no. They're kind of like just looking at their phone. They're looking at like the Elimination Chamber thing. Was it the Elimination Chamber? I think it was. Anyways, Orton came out, said a couple of things behind him, and said, uh, what about one of you two? Who wants to get beaten up, eh? And just the way like he was chatting was actually pretty funny. And once again, Waller puts Theory under the bus. That duo is just not going to last. I just, I'm telling you, it's just not going to last. Tiffy Stratton defeats Naomi. This is a good match. Both are incredibly athletic with all their flips and all that. It's just uh, it's just crazy, like I said. Really, really good. Well done. Don't have any nitpicking to do there. 
this was, uh, yeah, this was kind of expected. Bailey and Dakota Kai versus the Kabuki Warriors. Dakota Kai's first match, but she wasn't technically medically cleared, I don't think. Bailey went to tag in Dakota, jumped off the ring apron, walked away. Bailey chased her. Melee ensued. They all ganged up on her. So the, it was just like a disqualification. So it's going to be, again, interesting to see who comes to Bailey's defense, who's going to like help her or be you know, her friend or whatever. I have no idea. And then backstage, we got to see Nick Aldis that was saying to Jay Cargill, you need to get back here so we can chat. And then the Kabuki Warriors were quickly there laughing and giggling. And Jade Cargill pointed at EO Sky, essentially saying, someday I'm coming for that title and I could totally see that match. That would be something. Braun Breaker versus the NXT guy, because I forgot his name. Zion Quinn. It was a squash match. Ding, ding, spear, match over. That was it. That was it. Not into those squash matches, like I said. A match against Grayson Waller would have been better. Had some back and forth. He could still make Braun look strong without making the other guy look like a like a Muppet. Vignette promo again with Santos Escobar. For me, these are great. I really, really enjoy them. And then Carlito versus Santos in a street fight was nice. It was a little rough, a little, a little awkward in the beginning there, wasn't it? it just kind of... They needed to warm up. That's okay. It's okay. It's all about the entertainment in the end. It wasn't like it was sloppy like that the whole match. And then Lost El Fantasmo interfered. LWO took a while to come out and help out, but they did. Then it was a all-out brawl. Just the whole thing as a whole, like that whole match, that whole segment, if you will, for me, was really nice. Rey Mysterio comes out. He had the crutches. He was faking it. Bop, bop in the head. It was great. That is the ending I wanted with Carlito Escobar defeating Santos Escobar. I love Carlito, man. I like Santos. I just I just like all these people. Really, really good. I was very much entertained. Backstage, Pete and Tyler chat with Nick Aldis about wanting another shot at the tag titles, saying blah, 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 look how close we came to winning. Nick sees LA Knight afterwards as he's walking by. Because he's like banging on doors and whatnot. And Nick tells him, look, AJ's not here. And he, and he wasn't. He, he didn't like show up out of nowhere sneaking up on him. They should have done that, honestly. To me, they should have done that. To me, that would have been just that extra five seconds of entertainment we could have had. But we didn't get it. But the end of the night... That right there was awesome. The main event. Kevin Owens announces the special guest commentator never fails to disappoint. Wait. No, he never fails to impress. Anyhow, I'm really tired. <laughs> Sometimes I just splurt out these random typical sayings that you hear. And I was like, wait, that actually didn't make any sense for that specific phrase that I was just using. It was great, as always. So, KO. Yeah, sorry, I'm like, I need to go back to bed or something. Yes, this was a great match, wasn't it? So Kevin Owens was on commentary. <laughs> Randy Orton had his match. Because I'm, I'm looking, because for a split second, what happened just there? There we go. I'm looking at this. I'm looking at my <laughs> notes. And all I see, like, really quickly is, like, KO special guest commentator. And I skipped over Austin and Orton. And I'm just sitting here going, who did he fight again? <laughs> wow. Austin Theory is who he fought. And it was a great match to finish her there. See, I remember that one without even having to look at my notes. That whole thing with Austin Theory doing the somersault cannonball roll. And he rolled into an RKO. And it was actually beautifully executed. And man, does... I almost said Seth Rollins. 
Does Austin Theory ever know how to sell? I've been saying that forever. He sold that stunner so well, it was unbelievable. Like, just wow. I don't know. That was just crazy. So just overall, like I said, with the bloodline thing, uh, the Bailey thing, that developing, this match, LWO, again, I can't, like, okay. This was great. Man, when you really think about it, there's really not much. You could summarize this in like two minutes. The bloodline comes out. They start talking shit. Grayson Waller says something with Austin backstage. Tiffy has a match with Naomi. Bailey gets her ass kicked as Dakota Kai turns her back on her. Ron Breaker spears NXT guy. It's over. Carlito wins his match with Santos Escobar. <laughs> Pete and Tyler want their tag team match. And Austin and Orton had a good match. Boom. Right? So yeah, there you have it. And I also have a lot on my mind because I got a lot of other games I got to cover like Final Fantasy, Expeditions, a Mudrunner game, Pacific Drive on my main channel in 72 hours. 62, whatever. 2K24. I'm just saying, it's going to be effing wild. I may actually be forced to buy the overpriced 40 Years of WrestleMania edition so that I can unlock the showcase, get all the people, bypass it, not touch it for the time being. I can't record it anyways because it'll get me a copyright strike even without the music. Just give me all the superstars... All of them don't hold nothing back. I could start working on a little bit of my rise and as well as working on universe mode, looking at pen sliders and all those things I keep talking about to see what glitches, if any, have carried over from the prior game. So that is going to be wild. As always, if you liked the video, go ahead, give it a thumbs up. It does greatly help support the channel with the algorithm. You didn't like the video, go ahead, give it a thumbs down, and I'll bend it in half, twist it. Solo Sokoan Spike in the rectum. Remember, I'm going to have to explain it until it becomes a thing. Solo Sokoan is a Solo Sokoa Samoan Spike. So Sokoa Samoan Sokoan. Original, if you ask me. If you're not entertained... I don't remember selling you a ticket. I don't owe you nothing. Take care, and maybe I'll see some of you in the next one. Bye for now.